Well, hello and welcome to PM Express. And Kwa Binya sell breaks causes a lot of apprehension within citizenship. Because the big question is, if indeed the police can protect themselves, <coughs> then what are we going to do? You and I, the average citizen, sitting at home hoping that in the dying moments the police will come to our rescue and they themselves are being persecuted and they're running. The speed with which servicemen and security men are being killed, the impunity with which they are being killed. And if you look at uh, how the success of trial and arrest, it seems to, as if we're communicating to these robbers that, you know what, the police is a target and go after them. Indeed, uh, Dr. Kosienin said once that, look, watch this space, it's going to be rampant. And I think the success of this depends on how much you pursue the criminals and how much success you get in catching them. Because if everybody's at home and thinks I can go into any police station and free my friends and get away with it, believe you me, probably five out of 10 would try it. The police have to up their game. The security personnel have to up their game because we all need to feel safe. My name is Nana Sakwal, the fourth chief of the Republic of Akwamodu Masa. When I come back, we are looking at the Kwabinya cell break and repercussions that will come thereafter. Don't move. Well, thank you very much for staying. Indeed, uh, over the weekend, uh, some seven people escaped from the uh, Kwabinya police station because their friends from outside, you know, came into the police station, did shot one policeman and freed seven corporates or seven alleged prisoners from the cells and away they go. It is said, the reporter, that they did not even have a gun at the police station at the time the robbers came. Now that is scary. Indeed, the police said there were seven people that have escaped, but they've given us uh, photos of six, which means even the seventh guy was just in there, probably not records taken, probably not records taken because they haven't been released. I mean, what is going on? And uh, it, it, it's a very sad situation because if, if they touch the police so freely and with this impunity, God knows what they will do to you and I who don't even have guns or don't have a uniform and don't look and command the same respect as the police do. And with me and the studio are people who can really speak to this subject. Sitting right next to me, Captain Budukumsin needs no introduction, retired, uh, still, you know, security in his blood. Captain, you're welcome. Thank you. And then I have uh, Adam Bona, our own in-house security analyst, uh, PM Express security analyst. Adam, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, joining us on the phone later will be Dr. Kosienin, who will join us on the phone later to also share his insight. Indeed, he's already... Uh, Prophet Kosien predicted that look, these things will happen. Probably looking at how the attitude of the police. But let me start with you, uh, Adam. Number one, were you surprised to hear such a thing at uh, Kwabinya? Thank you very much, and once again, good evening to your cherished uh, viewers. I wasn't surprised. If you look at the amount of investment that has gone into the security services, you know, i.e. the Ghana Police Service in the last 10 years, then one will call the states of our current police service into question. And I have put it on record <clears throat> when this news broke that uh, are you aware that the entire Ghana Police Service has just 6,000 AK-47s? The entire Ghana Police Service, they have just 6,000 AK-47. And and some of them, we huh? have we have about we have close to thirty-two thousand police officers, and mm -hmm. so we are doing no. roughly about Four five two. to an AK-47. And so it tells you and some may not be working. Uh, no, yeah, we have <laughs> some of them that are you know not functioning, 
And so what it means is that uh, any, if, if, if the investment hasn't come in in, in the last you know, uh, decade, it means that uh, definitely you go into a police station and you won't have guns. And also uh, the, 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 the setup at the police stations, recruitment over the years, I mean, somewhere, I think the last two, three years, four years, we haven't seen serious, we haven't seen any significant recruitment into the Ghana Police Service, especially. It was just recently, we, I mean, the current administration, I think, is uh, recruiting about 2,000 or so, 2,000 or more uh, police service. Uh, recently, we had the president put in some vehicles here and there, but we hope that the investment will come in. But I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised, and as uh, the show continues, I'm sure there are some facts and figures I'm going to be sharing with the general public, hoping that uh, the policy makers, the powers that be, Ghanaians, and you know, the previous government and the current government will take uh, the, the lawyers to say judicial notice of what you call it, some of the facts and figures I am going to be sharing, hoping that uh, as we move on as a nation, uh, Captain is Captain retired this year, and he would have fired a lot of guns. And he would tell you that bullets don't discriminate. When they are fired, they go through you, and when they go through you, depending on where they catch you at, you might die. They both die. <clears throat> uh, Captain, are we playing with fire if we uh, treat such? Uh, if we. Let's just. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Are we are we playing with fire in the way we are dealing with this? It happened in so many, you know, where the indigents, you know, got angry, went and burned a police car. It happened in Odom or Abum, you know, town like that. You know, and you don't see a lot of fire and fury from the services when this thing happens. Are we, are we playing with fire? Um, to add on to what Mr. Bona said, mm -hmm. I, I think what happened is a natural progression. I have been wondering when are we going to see something like that because uh, we are progressing from petty thievery to armed robbery. Now we find grenades, have other smaller weapons, and experts have been talking about the proliferation of these small arms and light weapons in West Africa. And Ghana being an oasis, it comes in. And we unfortunately have this sort of laid back or lethargic attitude towards evolving situations until it overcomes us. And um, now we hear that we have people coming in from the sub-region feeling comfortable in Ghana because it's a soft spot. Our border restrictions are we, are, we are more ECOWAS than ECOWAS itself. <laughs> We're losing everything. And they come and they find a, conf, uh, a safe haven here. And uh, me, myself, having been a rebel before, when these fighters get into your region, they have ways and means of getting weapons in there. And so we, I've been wondering, when are we going to see something like this? And I, I around over Christmas period, I visited my hometown on, on the way, uh, I think it was on the 29th or 30th, I wanted to go to the police station and talk to someone. And the district police station at 11.45 was shut. The district at all was closed, nobody. The other police station, which I should call is it a smaller post or whatever, had one female officer there with a the buckle open. So it struck me, what, you know, and these things keep on going. And like what we saw, that when is something this daring is going to happen to shake us into some sort of reaction. And unfortunately, it has happened. Uh, I'm surprised to hear that there wasn't even a weapon there. But I've been looking, or some of us have been looking at the proliferations of police posts. I mean, it looks like now anybody can say, I can build your police post and they take. There's no strategic plan to the sighting of these posts, or, or maybe there is. And that when we say, I want a police post, it fits into a strategy, but I don't think that's how strategy works. If it's a strategic plan, you say you want a police post, they will tell you that, okay, we would want to have a police post, but it has to be in this area, or this area has been demarcated to serve you people. And they proliferate. If you can donate a container, you get a police post. Sometimes if it's even a tent, 
get a police post. And then you look at the architecture of these police posts and you wonder, is it constructed with security in mind? How safe are these structures to hold, uh, hold with people, some, some of the these people, things? Keep people out. Yes, you know, and um, I, I think a lot of these things have to be critically questioned now. Uh, and then as we go, we'll see. Uh, we, it, the, what we'll discuss, we'll, we'll bring it out. I think the threats are evolving, and so therefore the tactics and training should also evolve. And I guess it is evolving, but maybe a tad too slow. Uh, Adam, are we supposed to expect more of such impunity? Or you've so. seen something in the system that's like, oh no, that's the shake. They've shaken the system. I don't think it's going to happen again. Not, not really. I mean, uh, I think I started questioning uh, some of the rhetorics uh, the very day the highlights of the budget were read in Parliament by the Honourable uh, Minister of Finance. Uh, you realise that uh, he told us that somehow probably the policy makers weren't taking our security you know, uh, into consideration because throughout those highlights, no security and no safety issues were mentioned. And I think in this studio on that day, I was on with uh, Honorable Kodio Pong Kumawi, and I raised them, I think, also on PM Express. It tells you that uh, if we are a nation where the whole world, I mean, democracies are faced with, and these things are bound to happen, uh, in a country where we pride ourselves by saying the rule of law must work. It means that the courts, the, 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 the whole you know, criminal justice system must work, must seem to be working. And it demands a lot of uh, you know, investment into that area. But unfortunately, uh, this is your <coughs> question as whether it is we are going to see this uh, stopping or reoccurring. Yes, it is going. We are going to have, uh, if, if nothing, if we don't see resources from the, the central government going into uh, probably the Ministry of the Interior and you know the, the sector, the, the agencies that come under that ministry, then we are in trouble. And so I would say that until such a time that uh, we recruit more people, we train more of these police officers, and you know, uh, let's not also forget that we have had a lot of miscreants recruited into the Ghana Police Service. And these people were aided, were overly aided by some of our own, you know, politicians. You know the guy is not qualified. You know the guy might have some shady deals here and there. He might have done something dodgy here and there. They pushed them in. You know, I think, was it 2016? Uh, some of them, 2016, 2017, some of them were uh, dismissed from training. We had, you, you remember? Yeah. Why, why would it happen? Because the, the, the politicians would not distance themselves from, you know, the security agencies and allow them to do what they have to do. You would have a DC who would say, I have 10 brothers, I will need them, or 10 of my constituency, you know, people who I need them, and so calm them. And you look at the political, you know, violence among the political parties, where you have Delta forces, you have all these people who talk with impunity. And some of them are so daring. They would say that, well, we are going to do it, and you can't do anything to us. And so once people get to get away with murder, then Nana and our viewers and uh, captain, we are going to have these things occurring and reoccurring. These guys who broke jail, I mean, I see this, even though, unfortunately, we had uh, a fallen police officer. I see this not to be as serious as the one that happened in Kumasi. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I see this not to be, even though someone had fallen, unfortunately we've had uh, a hero, you know, someone is dead, and you know, condolences to the family. It is not, apart from the, the death, it is they're, not as serious. They're going into the courtroom to Yes, free. It, it's not as serious as what happened in the courtroom. But what's, I mean, what, what sentences were, uh, what, what, I mean, they were fined some peanuts. And so you see, it doesn't matter where, what all of us do. We need to talk and ensure that the criminal justice system delivery in this country is superb. Because if the police arrest and they send these people to court, and the courts, I mean, even though these guys, the evidence is there, and 
some political, you know, head is sitting there and say, let them go. We are going to have these things happening uh, at our police stations and breaking in and as we speak, uh, if you go to serious, uh, most of these countries, you, you have levels of security at various police stations. But That's over here, we don't have them. Tati, I mean, is security too expensive and this is what we can provide? Well, security has never been cheap. Security, you can't say it's too expensive. I mean, how expensive is, is your safety? If you want to put a price on your life, that's a different issue. But what is the price on your head? I mean, security can be too expensive. That doesn't also mean that's a free for all and should be criminally expensive. But security is expensive. Now, as, as to the question whether are we going to see more of these happening, um, if I were in any position to influence this thing, I can tell you it can be stopped dead in its tracks. It's the reaction you put in. You can stop it dead in its tracks. You see, Ghanaians, for that matter, I, we, we are that bold, but we are not that daring. I tell you. You know, and if they put on a robust posture, and go robustly after these people. And like what the president has been saying. You see, let's put things in context. Our police were, had been brutalized over the years, where the political authorities have brutalized them into coercion, where you can't do this, you can't do this. So now that the president says, look, you are free. The cage is open. It's like chicken in a cooped cage. The door is open, but they are still in there. It, it, we have to coax them out of it. Too afraid. <laughs> we have to coax them out of it because if one or two constables have done the right thing and they've been transferred to Tumu and uh, Nyenyano, you'll be careful when your children are going to school in Great Post, you want to be careful. But we have to coax them out of that <clears throat> mentality. But at the, at the same time, it's your response to it. I mean, I, I, anyway, barracks, military barracks are built differently. They are secluded. But the police posts are in the public. But you can defend it. You can make it so expensive and so dangerous for somebody to try to attack a police post. We've had it severally over the years. This police post, people want to attack the police post. This police post, this post. The posture there should be robust, especially when you see that there's the possibility of that. It should be proactive reinforcement, robust posture, and... What, 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 what does scare away the average old lady who wants to come and report a goat that's eating its cassava constantly if there's this robust poacher? No, it wouldn't. No. It wouldn't. He's come, the person, yeah. she or he is coming to a police station, and you say, oh, police say they are policemen and guns. You go to army barracks, and you say, I'm afraid of guns. Why did you go there? You expect it, but you wouldn't expect to see the guns in Mokola. Then you'll be scared. So let's put it in context. Mm -hmm. But that posture should be robust. I remember some police commanders kept on warning that he will not, they will not tolerate civilians storming police stations. Why? Because one did it, two did it, and nothing seriously happened to them. But hey, if you attack a police station, be careful, you could be shot. Be careful. I mean, that's not where you use the truncheons and them and these things. Yeah. I mean, a mob is a danger. If you have ever stood in front of a mob, you will see how dangerous it is. You know, so the, the posture on these things should be robust and should have a very big deterrent factor so that the next person won't try to copycat. The next person shouldn't try to copy. Again, I think maybe there's, there may be also something wrong with the architecture of these uh, police stations. How easy is it to defend it or how easy is it to over, overrun it? You know, uh, like we are saying, if I see some new police posts coming up, and I wouldn't be surprised that there are no guns. But the issue is that why would you put up a police post without a gun? At least those on duty, not all the 32,000 should be carrying guns at the same time, fine. But at least those on duty should have guns. If they don't have guns, then there's something wrong. You can't put two people on duty from 10 to 6 a.m., 5 a.m. unarmed. It's criminal. I think it's criminal. It's dangerous. Especially when you have armed robbers or dangerous robbers there, then something must have happened. You know, I'm not critiquing, but what I'm saying is that the, the, the policing should, should be looked at. The staffing should be looked at. The tactics should be looked at. I'm saying that the threats are evolving. And so, therefore, the tactics, the training, the manning, the equipment should also be evolving. 
And that is what we should be doing. And I said in my opening that it could be that I know that they are also evolving their tactics and all these things. Over the weekend, I was at a function somewhere in, a, in Ghana, I wouldn't say. <laughs> and I saw some funny dressed people and I was like, what is this? And this is the anti terrorism I said, like, whoa, this is the first time, wow. Okay, that means that <laughs> it's evolving. Mm. Uh, in my time, there was no anti terrorist people like this. <laughs> you know, but now you see them and you know, if you mess up with them, you could get into trouble. So it's evolving, but I think it's a tad too slow. And they, something must have gone wrong with the threat evaluation. Do the police, you necessarily don't have to put the, where the criminals, where they were arrested in the same area, if they are dangerous. You could disperse them. You could take mm. them to different areas. You don't put mix armed robbers with pickpockets, good stealers. You don't mix them. You, you understand? I mean, they should. I, I would think that there should be certain police posts designated as hard points, where you bring in these hard criminals. And these hard points are extra, extra defended. The tactics there is different, so that when you are even going to storm it, you are going to have hurdles to, to, to go over. You understand? Mm. Those hard points definitely will have the arms and equipment ready for it. And again, I mean, we're talking about CCT cameras and all these things. It's cash out days. I was talking to Mr. Bonner just before we got in. And uh, in real terms, he's telling me that investment in the police service has actually been dwindling, which for me came as a surprise. We have to invest in the right things. Well, buying V8s are nice. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a price, instead of buying 10, I'll buy 8. <laughs> and then, and, and I won't even buy 8. I will buy maybe 4 and buy some minor cars and then use the rest to buy guns and maybe these v, uh, the CCTV cameras. It's the right allocation of funds which should be commensurate with your threat evaluation. Let's listen to what the uh, Deputy Interior Minister uh, said. Now let me be quick to also inform you that the police are working very hard. We are investigating to ensure that by the grace of God we will be able to catch up on these suspects who ran away and those who co uh, committed this crime. We condemn in no uncertain terms this incident and want to assure Ghanaians that the ministers of the interior, the Ghana police service, and the security apparatus are working very hard. And any attempt to suggest that the security of this country is broken down is not true. We are working. And we can assure you that very soon, the perpetrators of this crime will be brought to book. May I humbly appeal to the good people of this country to work hand in hand with the stakeholders or the security agencies by providing information so that together we can make Ghana a comfortable place for us to do business, for us to sleep. Because after all, the work of the Ghana police is to protect lives and properties. And I assure Ghanaians that Mr. President has it on his heart that we shall do so without fear or favor. There is a manhunt for these criminal elements and we have no doubt in our minds that they will be brought to face justice. The government takes this opportunity to express its deepest sympathies to the family of the deceased policeman, Inspector Emmanuel Ashilevi. While this is one of the isolated incidents that have unsettled the Ghanaian population, we wish to continue to assure the Ghanaian people that the security agencies are working to ensure the general safety of the population. The preventive mechanism of the police service remains intact, which helps to nip such occurrences in the bud before they become full-blown criminal activity. One such example is the diligence of the police service, which with the cooperation of the public led to the exposure of certain people who had in their possession explosives which they could have used to harm the population. The police continues to deploy this preventive mechanism to ensure that criminal elements are arrested before they deploy their activity. As everywhere else in the world, certain criminal elements manage to once in a while beat the system in order to perpetuate their crimes. 
when this occurs, the police service has worked hard to arrest the perpetrators and make sure that they face justice. In the case of the criminal gang that killed two police officers in Drobonso, in the Sechirafran plains of the Eastern region, seven people have been arrested in connection with that crime and are currently facing the law. Government on its part is committed to equipping the security agencies to enable them to do their job to the utmost. Recently, the president outdoored over 100 out of a possible 200 vehicles for the security services. Motorbikes and other logistics are also being deployed to augment the logistic base of the police and security agencies. We therefore call on the media to support the work of the police by giving publicity to the positive activities of the police and also publicizing police alerts. Adam, is it, is, it, is it grammar or is it security tactic? <laughs> I mean, is, it, is it just pure well, grammar or there's some well, security well, tactic in there? I think as for the question of, uh, you know, this is one of a case that happened and it's an isolated case, I would say no, it is not isolated because if you look at how many police stations have come under attack, mm -hmm. then one would say this was something that w was actually waiting uh, to happen but it is refreshing to note that yes the current administration is putting in a lot of um, i mean investing i'm aware i mean um, i put on record that uh, there are just 6000 ak47s i'm also aware that ak47s have been imported uh, to be distributed to various police stations and so mm -hmm. i'm hoping uh, that the, the interior minister, the interior minister is doing a good job and his people, the deputy and, and the power that be would swiftly, you know, get these uh, AKs into town and distribute them to the various uh, Adam, you see, the, the, the police, when it starts, said, look, seven people escaped. They only released six. You know, uh, you know, gossip in the newsroom says that, I mean, the seventh person, they don't even have data on that person. That's the gossip. And they haven't come out to say why the seventh person's picture and his name is not out. He could probably be strolling around circle. Nobody knows this person. Uh, Nana, you see, the, the truth is that if you look at where we have come from and where we are intending to be, I have visited the police, the, the current police administration, I mean, I, I mean, if you compare, if you go there, the, I am aware that there are a lot of reformation that is ongoing, mm -hmm. but it needs serious, you know, cash inflows into ensuring that the transformation agenda works. I mean, I, ch I think that the media should be conducted around. That might probably uh, increase the, the confidence level of whether we are safe or we are we should we should be asking more questions and should we not support the transformation agenda they have cameras i mean the police administration currently have cameras in various locations but this mark shorts i mean these are things that the 21st century policing should have but unfortunately like i said investment into this area it is not today over the years has dwindled and it has dwindled Close to 60%. The, the chances are they may not have a camera. I mean, if they don't have a gun, nobody's going to leave a camera so, no, no, in the no, no. studio, I mean, in the station you, you, for you. you, you that, well, that's a Kodak camera or I, a corner you, you know what? and take photographs no, of no, people. I am you. even surprised that they actually had images of these people. Hmm. It means that somehow, hmm. over yeah, I mean, yeah, they they it, it means that somehow, too. somehow, the, the, they have done something that in the past they wouldn't have done. Hmm. And so swiftly when this happened, we saw images being splashed all over the, 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 the media networks. And so I would say that, well, uh, we've got to pat the police in the back and say, well, uh, we are going to support them in the fight against crime, especially when uh, a fallen police officer, you know, grieving family and the whole country is grieving and we, are, uh, we feel we have come under attack by this. Uh, Miss Crane. And this ECOWAS thing is not also helping us. People are just coming in and, you know, uh, if, I mean, this, this is, this, this thing was executed. I mean, I'm happy Captain retired is with us. With kind of some form of military precision, if you look at it, 1 a.m., if you, if you are tired and you have to sleep, around 1 a.m., it will be, anyone trying to wake you up, it will be very difficult for that person to be able to wake you up. And so it happened, and it was done quickly, and the guys got away. Well, if you know where the Kwabinya police station is, mm. the whole place is, that, that place is in the bush. 
I'm sure you know that. Yeah. It's in the bush. And so, but unfortunately, like I said, uh, it is an investment. And we have seen investment coming in from this current administration. It should continue. It would have been good. <clears throat> other police, you know, department or other police institutions all over the world have choppers. Our police administration don't have any chopper. And if you are going to scramble a military chopper, you would have to radio in, and they might not have even these uh, heat emitting cameras that would be able to pick people. If we had one or two, and this thing happened and they radio in and they went up, it would have been easy to pick, you know, people around and say, okay, somebody has just run there, somebody has just run there, let's call in of the place. And by now they would have found them. People run away from jails in other countries, okay? And it doesn't take long, they would find you. But one thing I want, probably I would want to reassure the public with, is that uh, if you follow the Ghana police closely, any time one of them falls, they would find whoever it is. <coughs> well, let's, let's, let's really hope yeah. so. Because yes, any time one of that's them the falls. That's the major deterrent. No, if one of them falls, if you are dealing with the police, any time one of them falls, they would find the perpetrator. So I can say for sure that these people are going to be smoked out. And so, uh, just like the, the, the Minister of the Information said, I mean, if you, have, you are harboring them, you should know you are harboring fugitives, and you are more guiltier than the fugitives you are harboring. And so, it will be in your own interest to call the Ghana Police Service. Their toll-free number is 18555. If you call that number and say, you know what, listening to PM Express, and the security situation, I'm hovering one of these miscreants and fugitives, <laughs> so kindly uh, come and take him away. I don't want any trouble. Let because me, as for the police, you can, I'm, 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 I'm sure they are going to find these guys. Let me yes. bring Captain in here. Captain, why, why, I mean, every time you hear guns is AK-47, AK, are there any other guns that are cheaper that can be used? What, I mean, why should it be AK-47? What, what's the fascination or the culture about AK-47? Well, uh, the weapon AK-47 has gained popularity amongst fighting men. That's one of the safest, very easy to maintain, very resistant to anything that will jam a G3 or yeah. some of these SLIs, sophisticated yeah. weapons. You go into the mud, you go into water. It's easy also to clean and maintain. And then the cost, the, the cost element of it. And uh, I think from where it is also manufactured, the restrictions are not that tight. Yeah. Like Russia. trying to buy a, <laughs> a, a NATO assault weapon. That, you know, if you hit all the roadblocks. So the AK-47 is the weapon of choice. And it's easy. And maybe you may get the ammunition also easily on the black market and all these things. So that's that. But you asked a question. Um, was the, are the ministers talking grammar? No, I wouldn't say so. I would also want to say that we don't have to hit the panic button. No. We don't. It is an unfortunate incident. Remember when the major, major was mama, lynched? Yeah. I mean, look at that, how it hurt us. How it, but, but we didn't hit the panic button that now they are going to kill soldiers all over the place. You know? And that's why at that time I came and said, it's your response to it. That should be so robust. People will now think twice to do something. And luckily, they were not as robust, but they were able to contain Captain, the fear of God alone. Must Captain, let me, let, let me pause here because I, I really want to talk about the reaction after when the major died and then we can compare some elements. So let me take a quick break and when I come back, we we'll talk about reaction after incidents. Don't go. Okay, thank you very much. We're talking about the Kwame Nyasel break. Now, uh, these are just some statistics. 2014, 11 policemen that died in uh, the line of fire. 2013, uh, 13, 2015, 7, 2016, 15. Yeah. Last year, I have about three, four, but not quite yet. This no, year, no, so no, no. this year, three, four. This year, three, four. Last and uh, this year, three, four. And last then last year, year more. election oh, time. Yeah. I, I have about four, you know, one at the Abeka, two at Tema, and then there was the police themselves who shot their own yeah. colleagues mistakenly, okay. mistakenly uh, shot in, the some, north in the north somewhere. Mm. So I have about four last year. But I mean, these numbers are too much. Too much. I mean, this is not we, we, we. <coughs> This is Ghana. Yeah. You know, this is Ghana. And the reason why I was talking about reaction time was that, I mean, if you look at when the major incident happened, 
And when the army came in, I mean, it got to a point where now the whole nation was now begging the army that, look, you take it easy, we'll make sure we'll handle this. Because and even the villagers, I mean, people disappeared. And I'm sure now, even if a soldier, were, and indeed it happened, a soldier went somewhere else and, and they caught him and they waited. You know, they, they, because they were, they were not, they were not they sure. Him. Yeah, that look. They gave him <laughs> Just, a, a cup yeah, of tea. Yeah, look, let's now. wait. <laughs> let's wait. Yeah, an incident happened. And when they caught him, they, they waited. They, you know, you pay him one step, so let's wait. You know, so I think they, they, they haven't ruffled the nest for people to know that, no, 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 this is a, a no-go area. Look at the numbers, 13, 10, yes. 9, but, 7. Ban yes. Banana, and we this can't year we compare are on three already. the military to the police. We can't compare apples with oranges. <laughs> mm. They are two different things. Two different fruits, Look, eh? in, in, in the major <laughs> incident, um, you had a society doing that. So therefore, you can move in and do a mass punishment of that society because they then whoever can but in this case they rather came to you you have to find their source so the the the, the, the reaction could be delayed mm -hmm. but i'm saying that in the u.s when a police when they say policeman down you see the way the police people rush in yeah and recently i think last year or so there was a police or a military guy somebody was shooting at the police yeah you saw the way they came onto yeah, the yeah, streets yeah robust with all their gadgets as if you know where they, they are but it gave a reassurance to the public because if the police fall that is their our line of defense so you always have to reassure the public that look if one of us is messed up with we will not tolerate we're coming with full force and that is the force of the law that's the force of the land you know so i'm expecting that by now they are or maybe doing a very hard research as to Ro their basis. I, I, having heard of and road would, blocks and road blocks well, and... Well, I would expect some serious preemptive raids to some of these known hardened criminal bases. Whether they have done anything or not, you have to put the fear of God into them. Like uh, it was said, you know, the prosecutor was not yeah. supposed to have put the fear of God into us. You know, they should raid their bases. And the police have this information. On the other hand, too, Maybe we should see uh, these drills don't really frighten people these days, but we should see heightened alertness at the police stations. I am saying that if you have five people on duty, you should be able to put five guns, at least three guns at the, at the police post. You know, so it is the reaction, but we have to see something. We, we really have to see something shortly that they are raiding their bases, they are and rounding up these. Uh, because I think you said something very instructive that. If the Kwapenya police station is not armed and we have armed robbers, surely they should go to, you know, the central headquarters or somewhere that they have arms. Just call and say, look, I can't keep them here because, you know, I'm, I'm not armed. Well, I, I don't know exactly. I, am, I don't know for sure yeah. whether this is fact, that there was no weapon there. And I, I would be surprised. But I don't know for sure whether, but there should be a weapon there. I mean, then it may be... I can't explain that. Maybe we have to get our facts right. But it, it comes to me as a surprise that the whole police station, there is no weapon there. If This is information that shouldn't even come into the public domain. Because now you can embolden anybody to go there with their cutlass. <laughs> catapult. <laughs> you go there with their catapult or a cutlass. Catapult. And, and there will be mayhem. You know, um, but I, 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 the issue, are we going to see a recurrence? Should we hit the panic button? I say no. They can stem it. And I think, I think, look, you said, uh, Mr. Bonas said something very, you may think that the police service is dead or comatose and it's not working. Commit an offense in their direction and see how they yeah. react. Yeah. They will smoke you out. They will smoke I you. never underestimate them. You know, I never, that's why I say sometimes maybe they are selective in what they do. <laughs> yeah. But you don't mess around with them. I expect, and I would advise or encourage preemptive hard strikes into the hideouts of these, these, these miscreants. They are known. They know where they... Uh, yeah, every time you know where the armed robbers and things, the gangs, they are, you know. And um, I, I will encourage... That is a signal that will put the fear of God into those people and reassure us the public. Because they can't react like the, the military guys is. You can, who are you going to attack? They've diffused <coughs> into the system. And that is the issue. When you are fighting these guerrillas <coughs> or irregular <coughs> forces, you don't know who, who to attack. They, they, they melt. And uh, if you are not careful, you go and cause more mayhem in there. So I, 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 the, I know in the police force, as we do, that they are not going to allow an officer to be gunned down in such an instance. 
it will be very reassuring to see all that rates have started. And the rates, I would recommend, should not be in Accra alone. It should be as widespread as possible. You have no way to hide. It should be multi, multi-locational and almost simultaneous. But, I mean, uh, are they not out of the country by now? Oh, well. Looking at the times. Well, if you know the, the case of uh, Combian. Yeah. Combian. If you know the co case of Combian, like I, I'm saying it again, that you see when you touch, uh, I, the police sometimes are very selective when it comes to uh, dealing with some of these things. Uh, you can sometimes touch ordinary persons and it takes them time, but if it is one of their own, you remember the case of uh, Kweku Ninja or Kwesi Ninja, yeah, yeah. where the then Inspector General of Police commandeered his people into this place, and by the time they were done with that uh, town, I mean, it was like a war-torn zone. And, uh, Hopefully those, they didn't go there with democracy. It, uh, that's what I mean. So basically what I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to say is it was that... buried under concrete, but they were still They found where they are falling, you know, colleagues, where they dug them out and... Some of these people were hiding under beds, they smoked them out. Recently, some of the police officers who were shot, those who were, who were part of it, some of them have been arrested. And so these people who committed these crimes, I can assure the public that they can run, but it will be very difficult. You know, Combien, they tracked them, I think, somewhere to Togo. Togo, and they, they, brought they, brought him back. they brought him back. And so uh, it is very normal for our police officers to smoke out people who let me let me catch up some messages on on facebook and uh, if you go to the uh joy news channel you can post your comments there and then i'll read it out to you uh this is munaf wakilu adams put politics aside truth be told activities of political vigilantism especially actions of these delta force and invisible force operating Operating with support from people in government have really exposed the institutional breakdown and weakness of our security agencies. Just yesterday, an innocent 11-year-old girl was shot dead by some MPP. Oh, MPP How guys. Would you know there's an did MPP they, did gangster? You see the, uh, okay, I'll read it. How would you know there's an MPP gangster? Uh, how would you know there's an MPP gangster? He was flashing his card <laughs> or he, he was wearing an MPP t-shirt. Or he saw him with MPP. Anyway, Patrick Mess, I can't think far. Have police, customs, immigrations at various borders yet ammunition are moving. Uh, are the borders yet yeah, the militias are moving to and from in this country uh, there should be a lesson to them that it's time they stop taking bribes and deal with issues well uh chris Ade, if people stormed the courts and nothing was done what will happen if common police station is attacked lawlessness all over the country uh, Kwamina Akoto, the recent killing of security service personnel is highly unacceptable and our condolences to their families. The ordinary Ghanaian, myself, has however lost confidence in especially the Ghana Police Service and its sister security agencies. The ordinary Ghanaian can no longer trust the security agencies to guarantee their safety unless things change rapidly, which I doubt though. Pa Frankie, the lawlessness in the country is getting out of hand. If because of politics gain, we defend the wrongdoing, this is how it goes. God save Ghana, our motherland. You see, Abu Bakari Sadiq, I think the capital punishment should be reintroduced. Very notorious criminals who are noted for series of criminal offenses must be executed. These people can never be reformed. They still pose more security threat even after their term of jail. If you take life unlawfully, yours must be taken to, to ward off criminals in this country. So these are some of the sentiments of you at home that are, are, are sending it through. But, uh, you know, on the road, Captain, Ghana is a peaceful country. I mean, by all, despite all these things, if you compare us to other countries, I mean, even white people who say, look, as for Ghana, 
you know, I was reading on the internet this last week, people from Chicago, from Texas, from this, and listen, uh, I think this lady wanted to come to Ghana and posted that, look, I'm a white lady. Is it safe to go to Ghana alone? And the people who were <laughs> answering, look, I'm Chinese, I've lived here, and I'm praying that they will extend my visa. This one will say, look, I'm from Los Angeles, and I'm telling you, I won't work in my neighborhood at 11, but in Ghana, I can go to Kukurubite at 1 a.m. I mean, there were the people who were answering back were mainly, you know, the whites saying that here, your only chance is probably somebody picking your pocket, but as for safety or watching behind your back, and she was going, she was a peace corps. They said, but you'll be going to the rural area, so as for you, Kradia, you, you know you're <laughs> safe. So these little things could be avoided. Captain. Uh, yes, Nana, but you see, like you said, people came in to support Ghana or defend Ghana. You just need to travel in West Africa to know the sort of security and peace we have here, to appreciate it. That does also not mean that we should compare ourselves with pygmies, as I would think we are giants. Mm. Ghana, in that instance, is very peaceful. These things are rude awakenings, telling us that the threats are changing, and we should also change accordingly. That is what we should learn out of this thing. And the sense of urgency should be heightened. The rate of change, the rate of response, appropriate response, should also be changing. You know, and um, again, I would say, I would not hit the panic button. It was an unfortunate incident, or maybe something that we slept on the watch or we allowed it to happen. If we have been reducing investment, proper investment into the security agencies for the last 10 years, what do you expect? You reap what you sow. Meanwhile, the criminals are always a step ahead of us. And if you are not careful and they become two or three steps ahead of you, you are in big time trouble. So we are playing catch up now. For instance, I was looking at the, 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 the population and the police ratios. Uh, the UN says that there should be one to about 500. 500 yeah. Ghana, if you take a population of about, say, 28, 27,000, a million, million, and we are having a police force between 30, 32,000, we are talking about 800 plus. <clears throat> now I realize that there is a program, I'm informed, we are informed that there is a program to gradually Increase, ramp up, yeah. that's number 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, which is what maybe our budget can digest comfortably. So that then there is an improvement. And before what our colleague is also saying, vehicles, equipment are being imported, but I would caution, it should be relevant equipment. Yeah. Relevant equipment, not window dressing equipment, you know. Sometimes I look at these things. It isn't every policeman who should wear a frat jacket. I mean, you're going on patrols in Bokwala and you are wearing a bulletproof fragmentation jacket. What the heck? I mean, they use it to buy maybe, a, I mean, you know, <laughs> it should be relevant. More relevant. Maybe a communication maybe gadget. Communication you probably gadgets need communication gadgets in Bokwala. So it should be investment in relevant equipment, relevant technology, investment in training, investment in uh, procedures. You know, because um, if we differentiate where we hold these people and we look at their levels and put them at appropriate strong points, I mean, this thing wouldn't have happened. Nobody would have gone to Kwabenya to release a pickpocket. Well, all too soon time is up. All too soon time is up. But uh, just like the experts have said, that we need to outsmart, we need to pro be proactive with regards to uh, the changing scene of these crimes in the nation. But let me take this opportunity to wish my wife a very happy birthday. Tomorrow is her birthday. She's been announcing it since November last year. So I've also started wishing happy birthday from today all through to, <laughs> to, tomorrow. to tomorrow so that it can commiserate for mm. us. So happy birthday, I would ask. So happy birthday to you. But if you want a nice shirt like mine, it's 24 Three six six two zero zero one zero two four three six six two zero zero one. Tanti's fashions will show you a nice shirt. Tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. And Captain Budukumsen, thank you, and Adam Bona, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>